Hey, hi, and welcome to another podcast. Uh, things are going crazy, like, whoa, you guys seem to like this stuff. So thanks for downloading and watching, and, and remember to forward it. Today, we have one of my favorite people, who is Mohammed Zoyabi. Mohammed, welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, if you can't see him, by the way, he's in his pajamas having a cigarette. I love you. You're hysterical. So where are you speaking to us from? I'm trying my best. Well, good. Uh, I was about to say good morning, but then I remember it's almost 11 and that you're going to judge me. So and I woke you up at 11.30. I'm and jealous. You technically, you technically did wake me, wake me up. Listen, I think that... Um, I think it's a good sign if people are not that functional in the morning because it means that you gotta, I don't know, you gotta rest a little bit and you gotta sleep a little bit in the morning. So I'm not really a morning person, but uh, that's 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 why you're here for, to, to energize me in the morning. So uh, how do we introduce you? Uh, we could put a lot of labels. We could put um, Israeli, Israeli Arab, Muslim, Zionist, uh, gay activist, Israel. Uh, what else do I put? How, how do you define yourself? Do you, I think you did you forget any card or pull out all the cards? I think all of them. Uh, <laughs> all of them. Let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I think I think the fact that uh, I think I'm a very dual or whatever the 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 other word to dual or more than dual is. Uh, but I think that my entire life I've been I've been this and that and that I've been I've been multiple things. Um, and I think only recently I started to be able to actually uh, identify these different cards that I can pull or the, these different uh, identities that I have uh, that are an integral part of me. Uh, so being Israeli is part of me because I was born here, because this is my home country, because this is the only place uh, I can actually go home. Uh, the fact that I'm Arab is because I'm culturally and ethnically and historically Arab and, and, and I speak Arabic uh, and, and, and Hebrew. Uh, at home, and and, uh, and 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 that is part of my identity and, and part of my experience here in Israel as well. Um, I came out of the closet when I was 16, um, so I realized, oh shit, that's another minority I'm part of. Um, and, you know, so, so I don't know really, it really depends on the day, it depends on uh, how I woke up, and it depends how and on how I'm feeling. Sometimes I hate the Arabs. Sometimes I hate the Palestinians. Sometimes I hate the Israelis. Sometimes I hate the gays. Uh, sometimes I love everyone, and I just want to sing Kumbaya with everyone. Um, but yeah, for you, who's what's what's your Israel? What's Israel for you? Israel for me is Israel for me is home. Before anything else. Um, and in addition to all of that, Israel is uh, Israel could be uh, to I guess uh, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, it, 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 not a broken English, but I'm gonna use my broken English anyways because English is my third language and I can make mistakes in English. Um, I think it's like a thing that has two faces. On the one hand, there's a lot of beautiful and amazing things that I adore and love. And on the other hand, there's a lot of things that I'm just like, oh my God, give me a break. Are you kidding? Like, for example, when you look on like the political uh, catastrophe, seriously, catastrophe, this is like the systematical catas catastrophe that we're having right now in our country. We're going to our fourth elections in a month. We're unable to create a government. Uh, we're unable to, to resolve our, 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 our in inner issues. It just makes you wonder if we didn't have so many outside threats, would we even be able to survive? Like, would we even be able to like hold our, our things together? I wanted to say another word, but I'm trying to be uh, polite. Um, like what is like, so, 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 so that, and then on the other hand, you got a lot of uh, beautiful things that, uh, that uh, that really make you, make, make you proud of, of, of this country and of who you are and, and uh, of the people uh, that make up this country, whether it be our, our social solidarity, whether it be our Zamut, uh, uh, um, um, how do you say Zamut in English? Initiative? Yeah. Initiative, technology, uh, startup nation. I mean, we're still using facts, okay? Like, I, yeah, I, I mean, I do you, like, do you, do you get, look, you've been in the forefront of, of what they, what they call Hasbara or Israeli public relations. Um, and you kind of 
fell into it a little bit. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar um, with Mohammed's story during the, uh, uh, as a prelude to the Second Intifada, there was a kidnapping of three boys, which actually uh, more or less was one of the, the reasons for the Second Intifada. And you went online and uh, condemned it. Uh, and as a result had to basically go in hiding and uh, leave the country for a while um, with the help of our friend uh, Kay Wilson, uh, who we've also spoken to here, who's a, a victim of a, 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 or a survivor of a, a terrorist attack. Um, what was that whole period for you? Because I mean, I, like the, the sense is now you've moved on. Um, that period of life, what, the, what, what, were you, what was going on there? What the hell? So, so first of all, um, it ha it all happened in 2014, not in the second intifada. Sorry. Um, okay. <laughs> I mean, sorry. <laughs> um, no, it's okay. Uh, I was like two. You weren't even born in the second intifada. Hello, no. Oh, I was that's born so in 19, I was born in 1998. The second intifada. Okay, think, that's it. We're over. We're finished. We're finished. <laughs> um. So listen, I, I think. Right, the wall. Yeah. I, I think I, when I look back at it, I think that um, it all started when when the uh, uh, the three teenagers were were kidnapped. I was a teenager at the time myself. I was sixteen or four, fifteen, um, and I, I remember how naive I was because I was so angry that children my age could actually be victimized and used uh, a, a, as a tool uh, uh, in this conflict or or as a way to. Uh, to uh, pursue uh, some sort of uh, national goal or, 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 and, and for me, that was, that was out of line for me as a kid, as a na very naive kid, who's still trying to fi figure out, you know, the reality that we live in. That was like, wow, if that, if that happened to Iyal, Gilad and Naftali, that could happen to me and to, to, to my friends and to people. How old I know. Were you then when this happened? I think I was 15. I was 15. Yeah. I was, I was in the ninth grade. Yeah. Um, and, and it really, it, it, it did, it, I did fill into it as you, as you said, because I, I didn't really, I remember the day I decided to upload that video that went viral and I was, you know, this geeky kid <laughs> speaking three languages and I'm like determined, yeah. bring children back. And, 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 you know, it was really authentic. It was really authentic. And I think that's, that's the reason why. Uh, it went viral. I mean, all you need to do is, uh, I mean, you're, you're making fun of my pajamas now. You should, you should check out my pajamas back then. Um, pajamas seem to be a, an important part of your life. Maybe we should add that yeah. to your list of identities. I, I, mean, I mean, listen, how does the saying go? I don't know if there's a saying like that, but uh, you make great things from your pajamas or whatever. Um, I think you just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> that up, totally. Um, so, uh, you know, when, when that happened, I was, um, I, I wasn't really expecting it to happen because when I, when I uploaded that video, I had like 70 friends on Facebook. I wasn't that popular at all. Um, and like, I didn't, I didn't think it anybody that anybody would, would care. You know, I thought that only my close friends will see it. And like, I'll have an argument with like, I don't know, my friends who agree and my friends who disagree and that that'll be it. But no, <laughs> um, you know, I oh, went to it's like uh, the, the stories are true that you've got death threats and you had to die. I mean, there's a whole, if you, a whole story on the internet. Really, I mean, this happens to real people? It does, it does. Um, I think that, you know, I, when, I remember when I woke up the other day, uh, after I posted that video, I woke up to my mom's screams. I was, I, I woke up to my mom being like, what have you done, Muhammad? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm not about? sure it was in that accent because that was a very British accent. <laughs> what have you done, son? Good God! It was more like it was more like this. Show me let Muhammad. That's more authentic. Yeah. That's how more it sounded like. Yeah. Um, and I was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, check your Facebook. And I go on my Facebook and it's like, I'm not like I, I swear if I'm like I mean no magazine, but like thousands of like. Uh, messages, responses, uh, 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 you know, angry people, people who support, wow. people who are like, what the hell is this? Did it actually uh, ever get? Did it ever get physical? Were you actually threatened, threatened, or was it all online? So it did. It did get 
physical, for example, with my mother. My mom was was physically attacked because of me uh, at some point. She was attacked in in our in our house, uh, and you know there were there were a lot of cases where or a lot of times where you thought, oh my God, it's going to get physical, like it's right. going to get right. This, this is serious. And I remember the first time I realized that the, that it's serious was uh, two days after I posted that video, when um, my mom and dad who are divorced got together, and they were, trying, bad, huh? <laughs> and they were trying to figure out what to do. And I'm like, oh shit! If I got my divorced parents to sit down together um, <laughs> with my stepdad, <laughs> that's like that's that, bad. That means, but that means that, you know, shit is real. Um, wow. In hindsight, in hindsight, um, you know, you were, what, 15, 16, um, and now in your early 20s. What do you take away from that experience? Not to post trilingual <laughs> videos. videos on video. yeah, absolutely. That's it. It's like, think before you post. Oh my God. No, listen, I think that, uh, the first, uh, the first actually, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, agreement or, uh, conclusion. 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 The first conclusion was that we can have an impact. We as individuals in our, you know, in our era today, in our, you know, in, in the era of social media and, and in the internet, we can actually have a say, we can have an impact. Uh, you know, if it's important enough to us, it somehow is gonna, uh, or it could uh, have have an impact or it could make people talk. And you know, what? when I think about it now, despite all of the challenges that came, uh, that came after, and despite the fact that I had to leave the country for a few months to, you know, let things calm down. <clears throat> I think that overall, a lot of the things that I'm doing today, a lot of the things that, or a lot of the places that I got to today, or a lot of the people that I know today, I would have not known if I didn't, you know. Yeah, wasn't right. Bella. That's crazy. So good things come out of, uh, of, of, of uh, bad things, if you like. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, your community. You're, you're a member of about five different communities, so we'll have to be methodical. <laughs> yeah, which one, which community are you talking about? <laughs> okay, is, so let's start with the Israeli Arab community. First of all, I, whenever I speak to Israeli Arabs, I, I, and I know it's a cliche, Israeli or Arab or Israeli Arab, etc. How much mm -hmm. are you uh, perceived as Israeli in the Arab world? And what's the difference? I think that's a great question, Neil. I think that I recently actually, uh, you know, I remember uh, when when this, the peace agreement was the normalization pact were signed with the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain. I think that for the first time. I remember I was watching TV and I remember when it was, it was all, it, it happened all in, I, I don't know if you remember, but like, it was all sudden, like suddenly, you know, I remember, I remember the, uh, the UAE ambassador wrote this, you know, article uh, in, I think a year ago or two years ago about how, you know, the UAE is, is ready to normalize relations if Israel, uh, um, uh, you know, gives up annexation or whatever was relevant back then, political, uh, uh, promises was relevant back then. Um, and I remember when I first read that, I was like, oh, wow. Like, I didn't even give it a, a like, I didn't even give it a, a second thought. I didn't take right. it seriously too much. And I remember when I, when I, you know, I was laying down on my couch and suddenly on the news, uh, you know, they announced that there's an agreement uh, uh, with the UAE and then Bahrain. I was like, oh, does that mean that Arabs are going to be trendy now in Israel? <laughs> does that mean that we're going to be cool now? Like, does Mean that I'm not going to have problems renting an apartment or, you know, uh, people are not going to look at me, you know, weirdly when I say my name and, and they're not going to be like, oh my God, you don't look like an Arab. Um, so no, that hasn't changed yet. Uh, yeah. But uh, but I think that the best example to, I think, the double tragedy of, of Arab Israelis is that uh, when, you know, a few months after, after that happened, uh, there was a, uh, an Israeli Arab uh, football player that was sent to uh, to the to not sent. He was invited to the UAE by their national football te team or something to play there, and uh, uh, that that football player, whose name is I think Diaz Sabe, uh, he's pretty known here in, in the football right. field. 
uh, he took a picture with an Egyptian, uh, uh, with an Egyptian, uh, 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 you know, Plan. public yeah. public figure. Um, he and other uh, Israeli figures like Omer Adam and, and other famous Israelis. And I remember when I saw how the Egyptian media and Egyptian social media reacted to it and how that football player was portrayed in the Egyptian media, you know, as this Israeli who is, you know, trying to infiltrate and, and how this Egyptian, uh, you know, public figure is taking picture with Israelis and blah, blah, blah. Right. And I was like, oh my God, they don't even care. Right. They don't even care that he's a Muslim. They don't even care that he's an Arab. For them, if you're from Israel, you're Israeli. But then on the other hand, in Israel, we're always seen as Arabs. We're always seen, even, even if you know, we're, 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 you know, people try to see us as Israelis or people say that they see us as part of an, an integral part of Israeli society, they always still look at us as Arabs. Uh, and they always uh, you know, want to uh, hear our perspective as Arabs or they always, uh, you know, they're waiting um, you know, to, uh, 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 to, you know, every time you meet someone new, it's just like, it's like, a, 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 like a, a, a whole new process uh, from the beginning, you know, because, because people uh, here are just so, you know, unable to sometimes look beyond, uh, you know, who you are or what you belong to. And it's not only about Arabs in Israel, by the way, it's, it's, yeah, it's everybody. If you're Everybody. an English speaker, you have to be an American. I, I, you know, I came here to become an American, you know, or Russian. <laughs> you're Russian right. if you're Ukrainian, Polish. Oh, my God. The Ukrainians and the Russians. I have so many. Listen, I grew up in uh, Natsalati. Sorry, Nofa Galil. They changed yeah. it. It's more, it's more, uh, you know. Um, and, and I grew up, you know, Nofa Galil is, is full of Russians and Ukrainians. Uh, and a lot of people who... Uh, um, you, you know, who uh, who were either descendants of Holocaust survivors, who you know escaped uh, East Europe and uh, um, and um, and came to to Israel. And I remember that other than the Holocaust, that was that was an integral part of 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 my you know childhood experience, growing up and hearing a lot about it. Um, the other argument was, uh, you know, the difference between Russians and Ukrainians. I remember that my Ukrainian friends. Would get so offended when Israeli, like when, uh, 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 yeah, when Tzavim, like Israelis would uh, would like call them Russians. It would be like, no, we're not Russians, we're Ukrainians. And it really, it actually got me interested in the uh, Russian-Ukrainian conflict, and I started to actually like identify the differences between the two cultures and the languages and and whatever. Even though foreigners, uh, they're similar, so it's not only the Arabs. Uh, it's it's literally uh, you know it's it's used against everyone, um, and honestly, like I have to say, it's not always it doesn't always come from a from a bad place, bad place right. from a negative place. Israelis are just you know they're they don't yeah. know how to they're not tactful. Yeah, they don't have manners as much as I don't know British people do or you know other countries uh, do. Uh, you know we're we're tachless, we're right on point. Uh, if we're if we're curious, we're we're gonna let you know that we're curious. Uh, if we're listen, I mean, I remember you know I was a kid growing up in Nazareth, you know, an area full of tourists. I remember I would you know uh, uh, finish school, I would go wander around in the old city of Nazareth, uh, looking for tourists to talk with them. If you wonder how my English got so uh, so good, um, and, and your I, modesty, hmm? and your modesty, and my modesty, yes. <laughs> My English is so good. My English is so good. I'm allowed to say that. Should I pull out my cards? You know, the Arab, the Israeli, uh, you know, I don't know. Whatever. Um, all right, let's move on. Let's move on a little bit. What's happening, I think, is interesting with the uh, uh, Israeli Arab community is I think there's a change. And I, I, I know that the community is split um, and I'm not sure. Uh, this idea of, you know what, maybe we can deal with Netanyahu. And maybe what we need to do is say, hey, we're a political voice. And you hear some of the leaders saying, you know, we, why do we have to always rely on the Israeli left? Because the Israeli left doesn't exist at the moment. It's either going to be a right wing government or a very right wing government. So we might as well say we can play with the devil if Netanyahu, if he delivers. What's your take on that? I mean, I'm not sure. Is it remarkably naive? Are they about to do a Benny Gantz? Or are they, huh, finally, they're playing the political game? Look, it's, it's a, that's, a great, that's a great question because I think that 
Netanyahu, Netanyahu is whether you like him or not or don't like him. Netanyahu is, is 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 an experienced politician. He's been in the field for decades, and he knows what he's doing, and he knows how to play the game. And Netanyahu knows how to play the game when it comes to uh, the Arab community now. Um, what happened is that in the recent years, we've, we've seen that the, the project that's called the Joint Arab List is just dysfunctional. It's not working. And the reason it's not working is because the, the Joint List, as opposed to what many people seem to think about it here in Israel, is not one party. It's not one, uh, 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 one ideology. It's four different parties who've decided to uh, uh, combine forces together to increase uh, the only thing that they have in common or the, to, to, to support the only, the only agenda, uh, the one and only agenda that they have in common, and that is the Arab agenda. Uh, other than the Arab, the shared Arab agenda, you have liberals, communists, secularists, right. Islamists, centrists, uh, and, and others uh, uh, in, in that joint together. And what we've been seeing in the last two years is, is a heated debate uh, uh, on, on religion and state issues. Right. Uh, for, for the first time in Israel's history, the Arab minority started to make, uh, to take a stance on LGBTQ issues, on, 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 on uh, uh, secular versus religious issues in the state. How much is that an issue of the LGBTQ? Who discriminate against people with dyslexia, I have to tell you, I can never get that out and get the letters right. Um, is, how much <laughs> is that a, um, you do realize that's five cigarettes you've had in about 30 minutes there, not, not to say anything. No, it's the same cigarette. Oh, it's the same cigarette that keeps going out. Yeah, I, because I roll it because I'm such a hippie. Yeah, is that another card of yours? I uh, live in I live in Florentine in Tel Aviv. Uh, oh, really? Seriously? So hold on in Tel Aviv. Uh, how much is it, it, there's an there's a LGBTQ community of Israeli Arabs? What? Can we add a WTF to that? Like, what's going on there? <laughs> um. We'll probably add at some point. Um, look, I think that in the recent, when I came out uh, six, six, seven years ago, I can tell you that I never expected things to change so fast because when I came out or prior to the moment I came out, I felt totally alone. I didn't think that there's a, there's a, there's a, 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 a present uh, a LGBT, Arab LGBTQ community around me. And in, in the last three years, things have been changing. Uh, it started with, with the public rage that we saw uh, following the stabbing of an LGBTQ teenager, an Arab LGBTQ teenager in Tel Aviv by his own brother. Um, and for the first time, the Arab public demanded that the Arab politicians talk about the issue. And for the first time we saw public politicians, especially from uh, either you know, left-wing, uh, 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 parties like uh, Hadash and Meretz, uh, uh, or I guess more centrist uh, uh, Arab parties uh, uh, or Arab uh, political figures in the, in the Arab community who started to talk about the issue and condemn the homophobic uh, uh, attack. And it, and it sort of, it was like a midon um, chalaklak, like it happened, things escalated quickly right. um, um, uh, to the point where, where the uh, members of the joint list uh, decided to join the left uh, in efforts to, for example, uh, uh, prohibit uh, conversion ter therapy or uh, 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 support surrogacy laws or uh, civil marriage that would include gay marriage. Uh, and that triggered, uh, uh, you know, an angry response from the Islamic movement that makes uh, or made uh, uh, about four seats out of the 15 uh, seats in, in, the, in the joint list. And the split started then. And then uh, the the uh, uh, you know Netanyahu started flirting with uh, with the uh, Islamic movement, uh, you know the Muslim Brotherhood branch in Israel. One must say, um, and when that happened, the there is I mean you mentioned Benny Gantz and they already became Benny Gantz too or Benny Gantz the you know non-white Arab version. Right. As, uh, if we're talking about Mansour Abbas, the leader of the uh, the Islamic Party, when when the uh, uh, you know the communication first started with with Netanyahu, he sounded very optimistic. He thought that he's going to be able to influence Netanyahu, and he thought that he's going right. to be you know, he's going to have an impact. But then Netanyahu, you know, he came he came out of the blue from you know somewhere else, and he he directly started speaking to the Arab community, and out of the blue. Mansour Abbas became a competitor 
uh, to Netanyahu. Netanyahu says that uh, uh, nowadays. Now, the interesting thing is that a year ago, the entire joint list was illegitimate for Netanyahu because Netanyahu knew that his uh, political uh, 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 foes might use uh, the joint list to form a government without him. And so he made sure to make us uh, uh, you know, illegitimate and remind us of, of how extreme the joint list is. And now when Netanyahu might actually need the joint list or the Arab votes, to uh, to uh, you know reach the 61 uh, or you know the desirable 61, um, uh, he he you know he's willing to to entirely change his uh, his approach to the Arab community, and that's what we're seeing recently. Where uh, where if credits due, you have to give credit to Netanyahu that he's the only politician that can play with the uh, Israeli Arab vote, and at the same time, Kahanists in the co in the same coalition. No, and in addition to that, that's true. You know, it's funny that, that at the same time he can work with the Islamists and the you know the Arab minority, and at the same time flirt with the Kahanists and the the ultra right. But the thing is that one must give Netanyahu credit for is the fact that uh, you know, Echumrim, eh, 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 um, he. You know, if you look at his foes, at his political uh, rivals, they all, the liberal uh, rivals, they've all been talking for years about the importance of coexistence and working with the Arab minority and integrating the Arab minority. And, you know, they've been talking and talking and talking. And when they had the opportunity to actually do something about it, they were always scared. They always didn't want to be, you know, uh, uh, categorized as, you know, leftists or Arab loving. And here's Netanyahu. He comes out of the blue and out of the blue, Bibi starts working with the Arabs and the Arabs, the Arab vote, the, the Arab vote uh, and, and the Arabs politically become legitimate suddenly. And suddenly everybody now wants to work with the Arabs. And suddenly everybody realizes, oh, we cannot form a government without, you know, 20% of the population if we can't get them recruited to our side. Um, will, and he so, Israel, will he get the Israeli Arab vote? Look, we got to remember that the, the Arab population in Israel is, 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 is a society. It's a society within a society. It's a society that, uh, that is made up of Muslims and Christians, a society that is made up of you know, rural and urban people. It's a society that's made up of seculars, uh, secularists and, and religious people. And it's also a society made up of leftists and right wings. Um, and Mansour Abbas says it. He says it clearly. We're right wing. We have more values to share with the Israeli right, the Jewish right, than the left. Um, and I think that, that that slap in the face to the left is why they suddenly woke up, because they suddenly realized, oh, the Arabs are not in our in our pocket. We can't just, you know, use them whenever we want and throw them away whenever we don't we want, you know? Um, and and that's why I think that yes, Netanyahu Bibi can actually uh, he can he can he can take one, two, or maybe three seats from the Arab community. No doubt. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people in the Arab community who, uh, who are you know, not that different from Netanyahu's Jewish base, uh, who view him as this leader who's protecting Israel and who's uh, uh, making sure that Israel is prosperous and, and who think that Israel will die the day after Netanyahu leaves, uh, you know, like we didn't survive or we didn't exist before him. Um, so absolutely. As, as mind-blowing it might sound to people, yes, there are right-wing Arabs, there are conservative Arabs who, are, who don't want, I don't know, gay marriage here, who don't want uh, um, uh, uh, separation between church and state, who don't want, uh, uh, you know, uh, other things that the left, uh, the center-left might do. And they see uh, uh, Netanyahu and his, uh, and his right, uh, right-wing uh, uh, bloc or allies, uh, you know, as potential political allies, despite right. the different... Uh, Despite the you know the disagreements on which, which explains why we often see uh, Haredim and Israeli Arab parties voting together on certain issues such as conscription and so on and so forth. Look, as an Israeli Arab, I can tell you, the solidarity I have with my fellow uh, ultra orthodox uh, Israelis is much higher than the solidarity I have with you know my neighbor here, my leftist liberal neighbor neighbor here in in, in Tel Aviv because but that's because he's vegetarian. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, there's a yes. Okay, I, is he vegetarian? Because he's vegetarian, because he's gay, because whatever. But the the solidarity. Wait, what's with your neighbor? Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Let's, let's... <laughs> I mean, come on, it's Tel Aviv. What are you expecting? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But the solidarity that that we have as an Arab minority with the ultra orthodox minority is a solidarity uh, that is uh, 
you know, that is rooted in, in our experience here as minorities in Israel. You know, that I have a lot of things to say to the ultra-Orthodox, especially the ultra-Orthodox political leadership in Israel. Uh, you know, the way, uh, you know, they're using uh, BB um, and the way they're, uh, you know, they're pursuing their own uh, 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 particularist uh, interests on the expense of the national interests. Uh, but the people, the community, the, 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 the 1.3 million ultra-Orthodox people who live in Israel are victims of, uh, of, of a political elite that is, uh, 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 I, I would say, you know, I'm not in a place to speak for them, but I would say a political elite uh, that doesn't always uh, uh, work for, uh, you know, the, their best, their best uh, PR or interest publicly. Um, but at the same time, uh, they have to deal with, with a wider Israeli society that doesn't exactly sympathize with them, doesn't exactly like them. And we see this with COVID now. Yeah. You know, some we realized that, oh, we cannot actually ignore the ultra-Orthodox and the Arabs. You know, I don't know if you remember, Netanyahu once said that without the Arabs and the ultra-Orthodox, our situation is good. Uh, you know, talking about Israel and how Israel without the, uh, the Khaledi and the Arab community doesn't have as much poverty, doesn't, doesn't have as much uh, problems. And, you know, what he said back then when he didn't need the ultra-Orthodox um, reflects the Israeli, uh, the general Israeli point of view on, on, the, on the ultra-Orthodox community. Uh, they, they view them as a burden, and that's exactly the way the right wing views the Arabs, or not all the right wing, some, you know, some parts of the right wing. You're in, you're, you're, in, uh, you're in Tel Aviv, you're not in Nazareth, you're not in the Galil, you're not uh, anywhere but liberal, vegetarian, vegan. Come on, where do you expect me to live? Do you Tel Aviv. Well, why? Because I think Tel Aviv is... is um, you know, it's not a question of why I'm not in Nazareth. It's a question of why I'm in Tel Aviv. And I think that Tel Aviv, uh, Tel Aviv has its special spirit in Israel and in the Middle East in general. I mean, it's a chill. What, what, spirit? what, spirit? what spirit? Yeah, I mean, you could say the gay liberal spirit, the hippie liberal spirit, spirit the, uh, the fact that you're anonymous in Tel Aviv. Uh, you know, nobody cares whether you decide to uh, to, I don't know, wear a skirt or, you know, put, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, something weird on your head and walk around the street. Um, and I mean, we just celebrated Purim and I was dressed up as, as Aladdin with my friend. Who yeah, I saw that uh, on your Instagram account. Very, very well. Yeah, it, was it was all over. It was all over, especially because some Israeli leftists think that they have a right to tell me whether I can wear a costume in Purim or not, like Gidon Levi, right. who literally wrote an entire article about how Arabs cannot and should not be part of A, B, C, D. And you're just like, am I missing something? Are you an Arab? Like, right. why, why are you speaking for me? Like, why are you deciding what I can do and what I cannot do? Um, you know, talking about why some members of the Israeli Arab community are just sick of the center left in Israel. Um, and that patronizing approach to us. Um, so I, I think that Tel Aviv is the reason why, I, why I, I, Tel Aviv is so special to me is because th there's a special spirit in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv, you know, functions, I mean, in Israel, it's called the bubble or the state of Tel Aviv because Tel Aviv really is, is, is um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an, I don't know how to say the word in English. It's an antitheza. Uh, an uh, antithesis, so. Yeah. yeah, antithesis of, 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 of the, I guess, the national uh, 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 government or the national uh, uh, um, government approach. Uh, um, well, they always talk about two states. Um, which, uh, you know, not only that they talk about two, not only that they're leftists, but they're, they're um, you know, Tel Aviv is, is, is you know, it's, it's a city that has uh, uh, values that I can relate to. It's a city that... Uh, 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 you know, systematically, it has a, it, it, it tries, or at least, uh, to uh, 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 fulfill, I guess, values uh, that uh, that are inclusive enough for me to actually feel part of. And unfortunately, that is something that I don't feel everywhere else in the country. Whether because I'm gay in Nazareth, or whether because I'm an Arab in Jerusalem, or whether because I'm, uh, you know, a liberal in in the periphery. You know, whatever it is, Tel Aviv is I think, at least at this point, the only place I can actually feel comfortable in. And that's the only reason why I'm paying the high as fuck rent here that we're paying. And on that, I'm gonna say thank you for joining us. A great way to sum up. And uh, 
get back to bed. You're in your pajamas, man. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for this conversation. And, uh, and it was great. And, uh, and, and uh, we'll see each other again soon. Absolutely, absolutely. Bye.